Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday, and welcome to this morning's live Zoo to You. My name is Lexi. I am an educator here at the Stone Zoo, and this morning I am here with our Colobus monkeys. Please know that there is some construction going on on the other side of the zoo, so if you hear some loud noises, we're going to try to stay as far away from it as possible, but that is what's going on on the other side of the zoo. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and put those in the chat and we will try our best to answer those at the end. So we are looking at our family group of colobus monkeys here. We have Isoki, he is the dominant male and he is 15 years old and he'll be turning 16 on May 21st. And then his two daughters are also in here, Kenya and Fuhara, who are six and seven. And then Tika is the adult female and she is 13 years old and she'll be turning 14 on June 11th. Now, I'll be honest, I can't really tell the difference between our colobus monkeys, but all of our zookeepers as well as their primary trainer are really, really good at telling them apart. It's just not something I have quite mastered yet, which is totally fine. So one thing that you're looking at right now is their really cool features and I think they're just so cool and so unique. So to talk about those, right off the bat you notice that long white fur hanging off of their back. So this is called a mantle. So that's their white mantle hanging off their back and it's just really long fur. And then over the course of the rest of their body they've got long dark fur. And in addition to that white fur, that mantle hanging off their back, they also have a really really long tail that nearly equals the length of their entire body. So the mantle, in addition to this tail, acts as a parachute and allows them to leap between the trees and they can leap 20 to 30 feet at a time, which is just so, so cool. And one thing that people usually notice when they're here visiting the zoo is their faces. Right, right off the bat, they notice their faces. And of course, this one we're looking at here, we're looking at their back, but if we do have the opportunity to see their face, people will often look at them and say they look so sad. And this is actually really interesting because that is just their face. They have a really relaxed face that kind of makes them look sad to us. But what I am really glad to tell you is that sign on their face actually tells the keepers and us as educators that they are just feeling relaxed. They're feeling content. They're totally fine. Um, if they were actually showing their teeth, what we would perceive as smiling, that's actually a sign of aggression and that is not something we necessarily want to see. Oh, we'll say hello to this colobus monkey now. So you'll be able to see that nice relaxed face and they're just totally content, which is really, really great to see this morning. Another really, really unique adaptation that I love to talk about with our colobus monkeys are their hands. So they only have four fingers on each hand. And what's really cool is how they got their name colobus. So as you might see in the caption, colobus is spelt C-O-L-O-B-U-S but their name comes from the Greek word colobus, spelled the same except with a K, so it is K-O-L-O-B-U-S, and this means mutilated one, referring to the fact that they do not have a thumb, they only have four fingers, which I think is really, really cool. So earlier I was mentioning that they are able to use all of that extra fur on their back as a parachute to leap from tree to tree. So where do they live? They live in the forests of equatorial Africa, so areas like Kenya and Ethiopia. And in this area, they really like to eat leaves and fruits and seeds. So given all this information, you probably now know they are herbivores. Here at the zoo, they eat lettuce, kale, sweet potato, green beans, celery, and primate biscuits, which if you have a dog or cat at home, if you feed them like a kibble, it's something kind of similar to that, but it's made specially for primates. Another really, really unique thing about these guys is their unique stomach. They have a multi-chambered stomach, much like ruminants, so cows if you're thinking of them. So 
cows or other ruminants also have a multi-chambered stomach and for our colobus monkeys this allows them to digest all of those leafy greens and get as many of those nutrients as possible but with this multi-chambered stomach i have talked to their primary trainer before and she has said that because of this multi-chambered stomach it makes their farts and burps extra stinky so if you ever come by this area of the zoo and smell that it's probably the colobus monkeys so as i mentioned in the beginning we have a group of colobus monkeys here we've got one dominant male his two daughters and then an adult female they are currently located across from the Animal Discovery Center and across from the otter exhibit outside. Now in the windows to the wild area, you may also notice that there are two other colobus monkeys separated from this group. These are two young males. And so in the wild, colobus monkeys will typically travel in social family groups of three to up to 15 individuals. This is typically made of one dominant male and several females with various offspring. So the females will stay in their birth group, whereas the males will leave in their adolescence, which is around three or four years old. And sometimes what happens is bachelor groups will form. So for, um, groups of just male colobus monkeys will form. And that's what we have here at the Stone Zoo. We've got this one social group here, and then we've got our bachelor or all male group separated from there. And one of the ways that these groups form bonds, they form really, really tight bonds through grooming rituals, different calls and displays. So as I just mentioned, we are outside here. We are across from the Animal Discovery Center and across from our North American River Otter exhibit. And like I mentioned earlier, they are from Africa, so they have a specific temperature cutoff. And so most of the animals here in the zoo have around a 60 degree cutoff if you're not seeing them outside. And since it is spring, we're starting to see lots of our animals getting to go back outside again. So animals like our colobus monkeys and our bush dogs are all starting to come outside when we've got some nice warmer days. So that is one of the most beautiful signs of spring is when all of our warm weather animals get to start coming outside again, which is super exciting. And one other thing I really love to mention when our colobus monkeys are out here is the different forms of enrichment that you can see in their enclosure. And one of the most common ones that gets noticed or pointed out is a small little brick or cube looking thing that kind of looks like a cell phone. You might be able to see it over in that back corner there. And what this is, it's actually a kid's mirror it's super super indestructible it is not a cell phone and they really like this because they actually cannot recognize themselves in that mirror they are able to actually angle it and see people behind them they kind of hold it up to their face like a cell phone but it is not a cell phone um they kind of see the other colobus monkey in there and they're like who is that which is super super interesting all right, Danya, have we had any questions come in? We have not, but I have a question. Absolutely. What is that blue ball? Oh, awesome. That is another form of enrichment, and this is actually one way that their diet may be presented. So there's likely some of their diet put in there, so they have to kind of go around their exhibit looking for it. You might even see there are some leafy greens down on the ground there. And their diet, um, like I mentioned earlier, is lots of fruits and veggies, things like kale, sweet potato, green beans. They're gonna be spread out throughout their entire exhibit, including in that blue ball right there. How can you tell them apart? Oh, that is a great question. So I personally, I'm not very good at telling them apart, but our zookeepers and their primary trainer have noticed their different facial expressions and they're able to tell the difference based on their faces, but it's not quite a skill that I have gained yet, which is totally fine. It'll come with time. Are they all black and white? That is a wonderful question. So. As far as I know, all colobus monkeys are black and white, considering their name are the black and white colobus monkeys. So you can see they've got that white on their back and on their tail, and the rest of their body is all black. And what's actually really interesting is that when the babies are born, they're born all white, and then we'll kind of get this new coloration of the black and white when they're around four to 12 months old, which is pretty cool. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this morning's Zoo to You. I hope you all have a fabulous first week of your May month, and we will see you next time. Bye.